Hi, everybody. Uh, uh, my name is Sid Snitkin. I'm the moderator for this session. And let me just mention, because you see on the screen here, I'm also the moderator for the next session. We have, I just want everybody to be aware of the cybersecurity track that we have. Uh, we have this session, we have a, a, which is about managing risks. We call it part one, you know, cybersecurity risks. Uh, then the next session is one where we're going to have a pa panel discussion about securing the industrial Internet of Things. Then tomorrow morning, we have another cybersecurity session, which is part two of this. Not the same people, different players, but the same topic, same focus, where we'll have case studies and stuff like that. And then let me mention, too, that on Thursday morning, MIT is having a, a they're having two sessions that they're going to have present some research they've been doing, and there'll be panel discussions there. I'm moderating one of those, too, so I have a busy couple of days. Anyhow, I want to welcome you all to this session. Um, the logistics of this session, people do it different ways. Um, what, we generally, what we're going to do is have two speakers come up and give a, a presentations. Uh, the first one will be Noel Tabas from Agrium. And the second one will be Ty Wilson, Williams, excuse me, I almost said Wilson, from Shell. And uh, during their speech, I don't know if you've been in other sessions here, but we generally save all the questions for afterwards. And we'll bring up then some other people and have a panel up here. And at that time, I'll probably ask a couple questions, but then it's free. I want to open it up. We want to get a lot of interaction from the audience, obviously. We like that very much. Uh, the way I think the best way to do that is we have some speakers there. There are two microphones. See them on the pole? No, right up in front. <laughs> Somebody's looking back. Right here, <laughs> right up front. There's two poles with speakers on them. There are hand mics. Uh, it's best just to do that. If you want to write a question on a card or something like that, that's fine too. I can get them and then I could ask the question. But one thing I just want to mention, we have to ask the questions or it doesn't get recorded. These, all these sessions are being videotaped, and, but the feed for the sound of the videotape is through this. So. It has to go through that, so we need somebody to ask the question that way. So, um, with, I guess we may as well get started. So, let me first, uh, I'm going to invite up Noel Tabas from Igrium. Uh, if you look on your, uh, the iPad apps, or iPad or Android, whichever one you have, the ARC Forum app for the forum, you'll see, the, you'll see the bio, bios of the individual, so I'm not going to sit here and read it to you. You can just look at that. But, Noel is a process control systems engineer with Agrium, and he's going to come up and talk to us about a project that he did. Come on. Thank you, Noel. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, what I'm about to share with you, what I'm about to share with you all um, today is how we uh, leverage uh, DCS uh, modernization to incorporate uh, cybersecurity in our project. Um, as mentioned, my, uh, my name is Nolte Bass and I'm the uh, lead DCS systems engineer. Um, one of my primary responsibilities uh, is to set technology directions um, in alignment with industry best practices at Agrium Redwater Plant. What I'm about to share with you all is how a simple DCS upgrade, who were initially called for a hardware refresh and network enhancement turns into a full-blown DCS security and infrastructure uh, project. First off, here are the things that I'm going to speak about on a high level note, and I wish I could dive in and explain more uh, in detail. So I'm gonna talk about the project background, the requirements, uh, security management approval, consult uh, the project approach, uh, technical challenges that we had, uh, network filtering, um, um, uh, strategies, the benefits, the learnings, and the future plans. Okay, first off, uh, first off, let me tell you a bit of a background about our company. Uh, who is Agrium and what exactly we do? Um, Agrium is a major retail supplier of agricultural products and services in North and South America. And uh, it's a leading global 
a wholesale producer and marketer of agricultural uh, specialty nutrients. We have um, our corporate head office is actually in uh, Calgary, Alberta, and we have about 15, roughly about 15,000 employees uh, globally. Uh, the uh, the Redwater Fertilizer Operation in Redwater, Alberta, um, that's where I work. We have two uh, major uh, facilities. We have the nitrogen plant and we have phosphate. So that's the picture of our plant actually. It's split into two uh, produ production uh, plants. So what were the project requirements? So about two years ago, um, the uh, process control group was uh, set to modernize, to upgrade the, uh, the legacy control systems from uh, Experian uh, 310 to uh, Release 410. Um, also, um, we, um, we, we asked to build a team uh, to, to have a, a group to modernize the out-of-sync installation. The main goal actually for this project is to have a common infrastructure because we have two plants. Technically before, the way we do it before is one plant do this and one, one plant do this. There's no, there's no interaction at all. There's no sharing of data at all. So we want to have one infrastructure that could share data back and forth. The initial plans really um, was just for a hardware refresh because you know the, the hardware were old and we need to replace them. And it's time for everything replacement, like the switches and the rowers. So, so as, as, as for any, uh, as for any uh, big uh, project um, to push through, we need to justify the cost and the rewards and may require a blessing from the upper management. So as demonstrated at, the, uh, at our site, uh, it is important to obtain approval for a cybersecurity audit from the highest level of the, the company. In conjunction with this modernization project, the, the Agrium Board of Directors determined that a third party cybersecurity audit assessment should be uh, conducted. And um, the, the result of that uh, assessment identified uh, numerous uh, architectural issues and security liabilities. In this example, actually, we, uh, one of our uh, corporate uh, IT specialists were able to remote into an operator station in the control network. And he managed to start changing like, you know, uh, system parameters. In this case, actually, this is the, the good thing about this is it happens during turnaround, so there's no no uh, damage at all to the plant. But again, here's an example of like you know what if you don't have a secure system, anyone can get in, can get into your control network. So, so that security uh, cyber assessment led to an executive sponsorship of a larger improvement effort uh, covering both automation and electronic security upgrades. Okay, so when the uh, Agrium Board of Directors approved the, uh, the new DCS cybersecurity project, um, we are a Honeywell uh, site, so we use Honeywell all over the place in our site. So what we did is we enlisted Honeywell to help us out exactly what we're supposed to do because I joined the company two, two, two years ago and we, nobody knows exactly what cybersecurity is. It's like, what do we need to connect this thing to this thing and all this stuff? So again, so that's the reason why we contacted Honeywell and said, hey, you know what? Give us you know, uh, a guidance on how we can do this. So we met a couple of times and we talked about like, okay, here's our you know, five to 10 year roadmap. This is what it would be in the next five, 10 years. And they came back to us and said, okay, um, they gave us like the, uh, the functional requirements, high level design and detailed design. As part of the functional requirements that were given to us is to describe security principles, okay? Network performance, redundancy requirements, and also strict cybersecurity requirement that both plans had to remain isolated yet still shared data in the event of cyber, cyber incident.
At the, at the end of the, uh, the project, actually, um, I kind of like it because usually when there's a project, especially if it's a third-party company, they come in, they do all this stuff, and walk away. And they said, okay, it's all yours, right? So the good thing about this is after the project, we're given the documentation, like an as-built configuration and the administrator manual on how to uh, do stuff. Like the as-built configuration, it, des it describes a complete configuration of the network and uh, enhancements so, so that we can rebuild it without them having on site, right? So that's the beauty about it. Also, it tells us the, uh, on, how, on how to administer the system. As part of the, uh, the, uh, the network filtering strategy that was uh, implemented at our sites is we talk about like how we uh, uh, determine if uh, different devices and systems should be uh, separated from each other. This one determines how applications uh, intercommunicate and uh, that forms the basis of our network zonings and communications. We also implemented one up, one down uh, communication policies to support defense in depth uh, principle. Uh, we also determine where network filtering will be enforced and the direction. Here's the, here's the example of our communication policies here. We have the over, uh, overarching policy for all communications, as I've said. Sorry, delay stress doesn't work here. So anyhow, Anyhow, here's the uh, communication policy that we uh, put in place, uh, the one up and one down. We, have, we also have the uh, cross-plant communication as minimum as necessary. If you could see there, from the internet to our, uh, the business network, we only have one, one up, one down uh, policy here. As part of this DCS security project as well, um, before this project, there's no level 3.5, or what we call it the DMZ. Um, this kind of like cut the umbilical cord between us and the corporate network and we're trying to, you know, to separate us from them. Not because we don't like them, but because we want to have our own trusted network. Here's another uh, um, uh, picture of the, uh, the, the network filtering strategy that we put in place as well. If you, if you can see there from the DMC, there's uh, that arrow that goes down that is blocked explicitly unless that's permitted in our network. And we have all the zonings here. If you can see, we have those bolt plans, the one on the left and one on the right. Every one of them actually can work independently, even though we shut down everything from the top. So everyone is segmented. Another approach that we use is the during this the, during the project is the block and uh, log uh, the block and the permit. So the block and log actually use on the DMZ firewall. Um, the permit and log that this one that, that we use during the project actually we use this permit and any log. Uh, what does it mean is we want to capture everything, all the packets that goes to the to the router and sends them to the log file. And once we have it in the log file, we review the logs, and that's how we base our, our rules of the, net, uh, of the uh, real network traffic. Typically, it took us about several weeks to figure out exactly what real and what's not real and who's communicating from to. Um, and once the logs are empty, so we just remove that to permit any, any log rule after that project. Okay, so each data flow is assigned a rule number. If you could see it here, there's a rule number, there's a priority, and there's a description. So technically, we assign that uh, rule 100, and we, we set priority as, as critical. This one is for any critical uh, communication. So we have that tight port protocol firewall rules organized by priority. So in the event of cybersecurity, a cyber uh, event, we could peel them off in layers if you wanted to.
this is what I'm talking about here. So just in case we have a cyber incident here, what we could do is we could shut down all the communications except for the uh, critical control communications. And as if we fix the issue, we could Sorry about that. As we fix the issue, we could re-allow all the communications back again. Okay, well, what are the benefits that we got from this project? Um, after this project, after this DCS security project, um, we believe that we improve our cybersecurity uh, capabilities. When it comes to manageability, um, site personnel are now capable of handling the system without a third party vendor to help us out to uh, manage the system. When it comes to change control, at this time before it can do changes in the system without, without any MOCs at all, but at this time it, it's, it's harder without any coordinated effort. When it comes to uh, security risk, um, it increased cybersecurity awareness at the plant. Um, Situational awareness, it's easier to spot abnormal activity um, in the network use, uh, and the user account logs. And this way also before, we, didn't really, we don't really talk to um, corporate IT if we need to make changes in our site. At this time, we have an open communication between them and us now if we need to, let's say we need to put something in a DMZ and DMZ is actually controlled by our uh, uh, IT security people, we need to put some remote access. That's where we put the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the program. In, the, in our case, it's the remote connectivity um, application. It's handled by um, IT security, but we are the one who kind of leveraging that services. Uh, learnings that we got from this project, um, it three things. Uh, the first one is a DCS modernization provides an ideal opportunity to improve cybersecurity uh, capabilities. Uh, this effort should be part and parcel of any technology upgrade. And the last one that I, the last one that I could uh, suggest is any control system project that disregards cybersecurity is incomplete and you'll be challenged to do it later. Again, just do it the right time and do it the first time and do it the right, the right way. Um, here are the future plans that we, you know, we, ha we, we had and um, it's the implementation of the, uh, the next generation of uh, security technologies, uh, real-time security monitoring, remote access um, to the industrial control system. Um, this one was implemented actually last year and it works it works really really well at this time and and it's it's still in the uh, the proof concept and we kind of like it we can do stuff remotely now unlike you know a couple of years ago we can do anything every time that we need to at least you know uh, enable an account in a dcs we have to drive an hour just to do that and that's very very you know very um um, a waste of time, I guess, for everybody. Um, the enhanced file storage and backup, we installed our first SAN, uh, SAN server in our uh, control network. Uh, that, one, that one was happened last year. Virtualization is getting bigger and bigger at this time as well. Uh, that's the first uh, site across uh, Agrium that has uh, an IBM Blade uh, server. Uh, it's currently being used for uh, the train operator. If you guys uh, need uh, any uh, clarification, I guess, or uh, help with anything, uh, you could talk to me after this presentation or send me an email. That's, that's pretty much it. Thank you.